Just a quick heads up, there's gonna be some spoilers in order to fully add some context to things I wanna talk about. All right, good, let's get started. This is it. October 2020, this is when I first wrote about the initial early access release of Baldur's Gate 3 nearly three years ago. And a lot has changed since then between the game being extensively reworked in early access, more development time from both the pandemic and delays, and even acquiring more outside funding and completely changing characters. There's been no shortage of changes to Baldur's Gate 3. Hell, I've even gotten more into Dungeons & Dragons and tabletop RPGs in general, and this is a game that I can confidently say that I'm excited for. And since it came out two weeks ago, I've done nothing but play it. So let me tell you why I think this could be my favorite game of the year outside of Hi-Fi Rush. By the way, that game still fucking bangs. While I'm not going to be going too in-depth with narrative and spoiler stuff outside of some examples, I feel like a standard overview can be worth it for the context. Baldur's Gate 3 starts with an attack by the Mind Flayers, weird squid-faced jerks that are basically aliens, but not really because this is fantasy and not science fiction. Your character is one of the abductees of these calamari criminals, and after escaping their crashing ship that made a detour through the first ring of hell, just roll, that D&D cosmology is fucking weird. You embark on a journey to remove the parasite the Mind Flayers infected you with that will turn you into one of them in a week's time. And this is before getting into the cult of the Absolute, who's using said parasites to infect people to their own nefarious ends. As far as adventure hooks go, this one is pretty solid. The stakes are appropriately high, and while you have a certain amount of agency, you can still indulge in the occasional side quest here and there, before the voice in your head goes, I should be doing the main story right now. While the main story is taken up by the search for a cure for your potential mind flarification, I can't say without a shadow of a doubt you'll be doing the same thing for your companions as well. There's six in total, who also function as origin characters that you can play as in lieu of a custom origin character. Regardless of who they are, be it the antagonistically focused Gith Yankee warrior Lazelle, the amnesiac dark god worshipping Shadowheart, douchebag vampire spawn Asterion, the repentant devil bound Blade of Frontiers Will, eccentric and potentially explosive wizard Gale, and escaped tiefling soldier from hell Karlak, they all have two things in common. They're all infected with parasites and need to get rid of them, and they're mostly all assholes. Seriously, with the exceptions of Will and Karlak, who are a well-meaning if slightly self-aggrandizing hero of the people and unwilling infernal soldier trying to make up for lost time, respectively, the companions of Baldur's Gate 3 are all varying shades of pragmatic, deceptive, curt, and even downright violent at times. Not that there's anything wrong with having party members who aren't complete goody-two-shoes, the first two games had a smattering of evil characters that players adored, up to and including the big bad from the first game, Saravok. It just feels weird when the majority of the companions feel that way from the outset. I can definitely see it changing as they open up to you and as you do their companion quests, most of which span the entire game. This is similar to what Larian did with Divinity Original Sin 2, where you had the six origin characters in that game that you could choose to be your controlled character or a custom character that you could make from scratch. And that's not even getting into the non-origin companions that you can convince to come with you, like Arch Stuart Halson and some of the others that I'm not going to spoil because they're neat surprises. But so far, the companions seen in Baldur's Gate 3 are multi-layered and complex, which is what you'd want in this sort of thing. You can also make your own custom character, which is highly recommended for your first playthrough so that you can call it yours. I went with a dragonborn barbarian named Marius, because in all of the times that I've played D&D, I've weirdly never gone with a barbarian and said to myself, okay, this could be fun, and boy howdy was I correct. This ties directly into my favorite part of Baldur's Gate 3 as a game so far, variability. Because no two players can have the same experience. To use an example from Act 2, my brother went in and found this weird dude who was acting as a surgeon and convinced himself to be essentially stabbed to death by his assistants, avoiding a potentially difficult combat encounter in the process. I, on the other hand, found an abandoned tavern and encountered a bloated undead giant brewmaster. He challenges me to a drinking contest and to tell stories, and I initially went, ah jeez, I don't know, and then I saw a barbarian dialogue option that was just CHUG THE BEER in all caps. So, I had to do it. I drank the fucker under the table so hard that he fucking exploded. It was hilarious. The dialogue options that you can take in Baldur's Gate 3 have the same energy as coming up with something absolutely ridiculous at the table and the DM going, you can certainly try out of pure curiosity as to whether or not the outcome would be wild enough to work and see if it's way better than anything they came up with. If I'm being honest, that's tied to the variability of both the stories I mentioned and the other main thing that I like about Baldur's Gate 3, which is that it feels like the most Bioware game not made by Bioware that I've played in a very long time. 
And as someone who's been aching for a new one of those since Mass Effect Andromeda came out, you have no idea how much I've needed this in my life. If I had to readily compare Baldur's Gate 3 to a Bioware game, it'd have to be Dragon Age Origins, and that the main story, while very good, is held together by the fact that the companions that you have palling around with you are so fucking good that you can take different combinations of them just to see how they'll react to shit, and it will be the greatest thing ever. And this is on top of them being able to be taken control of by you and also engaging in conversations with NPCs out in the world and doing their own shit on top of that because this game is almost as open-ended as actual D&D. So far, Baldur's Gate 3 is a game that I've been waiting on for a very long time. It's scratching the itch I've had for a new Bioware-type experience while also looking and feeling like the culmination of everything Larian Studios has been doing in the CRPG space since the first Divinity Original Sin game came out back in 2015. I am definitely coming back to this when I finish because this game is huge and deserves a full treatment and I want to see it through to the very end. So yeah, this has been me coming up for air to talk about this briefly. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go play more Baldur's Gate 3. And that will be it for this week's video. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. I've really helped out the channel and I deeply appreciate it. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.